Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. This does not mean that I'll be recording regularly again, but I was in the mood to make a recording and so what you're gonna get is probably majority uncut and I'm basically gonna do a huge data dump of everything I've learned about fountain pens over the past year. So I'm gonna start with the types uh, and sort of ex cost expense levels of fountain pens and kind of things like that for now. So we're gonna start with the least expensive fountain pens. And these are great starter pens. The first is the Platinum Preppy. This pen is, um, it's great for beginners. It's very inexpensive. A single will run you maybe $7 at most. And uh, if you, you can buy a pack of all the colors with all the cartridges for I don't maybe $17, $16, something like that. So um, they're a great way to get started. You can kind of experiment with ink cartridges and kind of get used to using a fountain pen. Now, because these nibs don't have an actual breather hole, they don't have enough ink flow for my taste. So I have found that I prefer a very wet writer and these write very dry. They're fine for somebody who's not looking for interesting ink um, qualities like shading you or shimmer or any inks or things like that. But um, so like super standard, like the inks that come with the pens, these are great for that. If you're interested in using more expensive like inks that you're gonna fill yourself, these are probably not the right pen just because they're not gonna do the inks justice. They'll function fine, but they're not gonna look very good. Um, the next option is the Platinum Carbon, or not even Carbon, the Platinum Desk Pen. This is the Carbon version, so it, it comes with Carbon ink cartridges, which are waterproof, but you can buy the non-Carbon version of this pen, and it's the same pen as far as I know. This is an extra fine nib, um, very well loved, very well used. These have a breather hole, and they're actually really, really nice writers. The line width is, is I would say it's more on the, along the lines of a Japanese line width. And so um, that's one thing that you should know is a Japanese or, um, it's mostly Japanese, a Japanese uh, pen manufacturer line widths are gonna be much smaller than European and American. Um, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, these pens run anywhere from 13 to $16 each. They use a cartridge converter or a cartridge so currently I do have a cartridge in here, um, but you could use a converter. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the whole converter situation later. Um, so these, well, the one that I bought is labeled for carbon ink. You can actually use any ink in this. It'll be totally fine. I love these pins. I have like three of them. Um, the other really nice thing about platinum is they actually make waterproof blue ink as well. So you can buy it in cartridges or in the bottle. Um, I just bought cartridges because it's easier for me. And so I actually have this pen has the blue ink in it. So that's the color. And it's the same, it's just a carbon dust pen. Um, but yeah, I've put a blue ink cartridge in it. So those are the first two options. The next option is sort of knockoff brands that you can find on Amazon. Now these can be a little bit hit or miss. So this was a hit for me, this particular pen. It was just labeled brass fountain pen, I think. And it sort of resembles a Caveco Lilliput pen, which is a really tiny pocket pen. This is, it's not an exact replica of that pen, um, but it is made of real brass. And the nib is a Japanese extra fine, which I love. I love super fine nibs. Um, most, I won't say most, many Americans prefer a wider nib. If that's the case, I would go for a Japanese medium or a European fine or medium, depending on how you like your line. That's something that you're just gonna have to figure out over time, unfortunately. Anyway, this is an extra fine. It writes beautifully. Um, I love how this pen writes. And it also, came with a converter, which is always really nice. So you can put your own ink in there. Um, sometimes these pens 
aren't that great. Like I ordered one a few weeks ago that leaked everywhere. It just was not fixable or usable. The great thing about Amazon is fantastic return policy. So sometimes it's kind of nice to buy fountain pens off Amazon because a lot of times the boutique stores will have like a restocking fee and all kinds of extra hoops to jump through if you need to return something. Whereas Amazon, you just put in the form and off you go. So Amazon has its advantages. Um, it's not great to not support the boutique pen stores. So just keep that in mind. They need to stay in business for us, but sometimes, you know, you like, you can't get these at a boutique store, for example. So just keep that in mind. This is called a Wan Kai Mini. This is a pocket pen. The company that makes them used to be called Moon Man, which you might've heard of. Now they're called Ma John, Ma John. This little pen, I mean, it's amazing. So these are eyedropper pens, meaning that you can unscrew the nib and put the ink directly into the body of the pen. There's no converter, there's no cartridge, the ink goes straight into the body of the pen. These are really fun, they're so easy to clean. Oh my goodness, I can't tell you how easy to clean these are. Um, the nib is a Japanese extra fine, so it's as sharp and pointy as I like it to be. Um, with different brands, you're going to get different nib widths. So I find that the Jin Hao company's nibs are closer to a European measurement, whereas Moon Man and Mahjong are closer to a Japanese measurement. So keep that in mind. Just read the reviews. These little pocket pens are so cute. This is really inexpensive on Amazon. If you look it up, it's called the Wan Kai Mini. I'll put a link in the description box. I love this pen. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It can go anywhere. It can withstand anything. It's amazing. So one kind mini, also very affordable. So all these pens were under $20 so far. The next pen I wanna talk about is um, sort of $30 tier, 30, 35. So that's when you get into some nicer pens. This is a Pilot Cavalier. If you have small hands, this pen can be really, really nice. It has a small nib. Again, Pilot nibs, Pilot is a Japanese company. This is a Pilot Fine. And it is comparable to a fine, um, let's say if you ordered a fine Moon Man pen, this would be pretty close to that. It might be a little finer than a fine Moon Man. But Pilot doesn't really usually offer an extra fine nib. Now the exception to that would be the Pilot Kakuno line. This line does come in an extra fine, and let me tell you, it is fine. It is a true Japanese extra fine. So if you go for the Kakuno brand, first of all, I highly recommend it. These pens are fantastic and they're really inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon for like anywhere from nine to $12. Amazing pens. You can use a converter or a cartridge. Um, and the extra fine is a Japanese extra fine. Also, I don't know if you can see, but they have super cute little faces on the nibs. They write um, nice and wet, so you can get your shading um, and different effects on your on your inks. So if you're gonna go for a super cheap pen, this is my number one choice for super cheap. Uh, this is also kind of in the 20 to $30 range. This is a Twisby Go. Twisby is a company that I haven't mentioned yet, but this, this pen is kind of in a weird round. Ooh, it's in a weird, um, range. First of all, you should know that that's totally normal that the nib popped out on me. That's my bad. Um, most nibs and feeds are actually just friction fit in the pens. That means they literally just pull right out. And I take my pens apart when I clean them, so I had not put it in properly. So anyway, this is a Twisby Go. This pen has an interesting filler system. It's not super common. Um, also, Japanese sizing. This one has an ink barrel space here. And then you just push the plunger down, put your nib into the ink bottle and let go slowly and the ink will fill up in the body of the pen. Now, I, I don't have any issue with how you do this, but I'm gonna show you later ways to do that that are a little less messy. I find that filling pens straight from the bottle is a little messy for my taste. so. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's a little cleaner in a minute. Um, you can do that without the plunger system. If you pop out the nib, and I'll show you, you're gonna use a syringe, but if you pop out the nib, you can fill a syringe. 
this is just a blunt tip syringe, it's not sharp. You can fill your syringe with ink, pop it in, and there's a little hole between where the feed goes here and the ink container here. So if you pop your syringe straight in there, you can inject your ink into the body of the pen without, um, without having to use the nib to inject. I'm gonna put this back together so you can see. You just line up your nib. So Twisby's, they have a little um, indentation where your nib fits. So you just line it up and stick it in. Now this one is not, this one isn't fitting very well and I think it's because I have probably swapped out this nib and feed for a different pen. So lesson learned. Anyway, that's the Twisby Go. I, I like it as an entry level Twisby pen, but for the price difference, this is $20 and a Twisby Eco is $30. I would kind of just go for the Eco. So, yeah. But if you really don't want to spend the extra $10, go for the Twisby Go. This is a Twisby Eco. Oh, I wasn't done talking about the Cavalier. Um, this is made by Pilot. It's a, I have a fine nib. The Pilot nibs are Japanese sizing. It's a really nice pen. It's good for small hands. It's not so good for people with larger hands, uh, larger fingers, because it's a thin pen. You usually want your barrel to be a little bit thicker so you have more comfort. The thicker your pen is, the more comfortable it's gonna be as you write longer periods. Um, but I still love this pen and it's $35, I think now. now the Twisby Eco is one of the most popular entry-level fountain pens. They come in all different colors and they have a very special filling system. So as you can see, there's the nib. This is also friction fit, so it pops right out. This section does not unscrew from the body. And that's because this is a piston filling pen. So you turn the knob, you put your pen down into your ink, ink bottle, all the way down, so the ink needs to come up past this point. You put your ink in and then you twist the piston and it sucks ink up into the body of the pen. That's totally fine, you can do that, but I prefer, as I showed you with the other pen, to just pull the nib out and use the syringe to inject the ink into the body of the pen because then I only have to clean the syringe and I don't have ink all over the grip of my fountain pen, which irritates me. So I'm just a clean freak like that, you don't have to do it, but um, this is called a piston filler. The other nice thing about Twisby, Twisby pens is they come with the tool and silicone grease so you can take apart your pen entirely. You can take it apart to the point that you only have the clear acrylic section here. So you can take this whole thing out, you can take all of these mechanics out, clean your pen top to bottom, re-grease the silicone, and put it back together. And they have instructions on how to do that included in the package. If you have the $35 to spend on a fountain pen, this is the, absolutely the number one choice to get. Now the other option I wanted to mention is the Lamy Safari. These are super popular, especially in America. These are a German brand, so the nib sizing is one step back from Japanese sizing. So an extra fine in a Lamy is going to equal a fine, if not a medium, in um, a Japanese brand. That is the number one reason I don't like Lamy Safaris. I haven't tried their more expensive pens, but I extremely dislike Lamy Safaris. I keep trying them. I keep wanting to love them. I have an extra fine here. I just don't like it. I can't get behind it, but a lot of people really enjoy them. So um, again, you can use a converter, which this one came with, or you can use cartridges. They're really cute. They come in tons of colors. They're easy to take care of. People really like them. So if that seems like it's right up your alley, and if you don't want a super thin writing line, go for a Safari. These run you anywhere from $16 to $25, depending on where you buy it from. Now we're going to move into the slightly more expensive options. So this pen is a Sailor Pro Gear 500. Now Sailor is one of the most popular fountain pen makers, especially Japanese brands. Sailor makes a lot of different variations of and levels of pen cost. 
The Sailor Compass, I think, is one of the least expensive. That one's about $32. This is a Sailor Pro Gear 500. I found this one on Amazon for $40. Um, I have seen them for as much as $50. They have a stainless steel nib, but they have the classic fountain pen body, and this one happens to have sparkles, which I love. These are super well made. The plastic is high quality. It feels like a better quality plastic than less expensive brands. And the pen nibs, again, are Japanese sizing, so you're gonna get a super sharp line. This is a fine, it's not even an extra fine, and it has a super fine line. So I'll even give you a little writing demo. So super fine. Compared to, let's see. This is the Wonkai Mini, also super fine, but a little bit wider than the Pro Gear. And this is the Pilot Carbon Extra Fine, or sorry, the Platinum Carbon Extra Fine. Again, pretty close. Um, so anyway, these are all my level of pen width, but you might like something a lot wider and so you would go for a medium or whatever. This is the next level up. This is a Twisby Vac 700R. It has a vacuum filling system. I've just cleaned this today, so it's got water in it. Basically, you these can also be filled without um, dipping them in the ink, but they're meant to be filled by dipping them in. So you would unscrew and retract the plunger, put the nib into the ink, push the plunger down and if you can see in the pen there's an, an widening in the barrel here so when the plunger gets to that spot it releases the pressure and the ink shoots up into the pen. Um, you can fill them that way but actually I think it's easier to just unscrew the nib and put the ink in and screw it back up. like you can do that with an eyedropper or a syringe uh, so keep that in mind. They're really beautiful pins though. This is the Iris model. The thing about piston fillers or vacuum fillers, excuse me, is that in order to use them for long writing periods, you actually have to unscrew the cap just a bit, just enough to get that plunger to come off of. So the plunger, when it's screwed all the way, the plunger stops the ink from flowing down to the nib. So you can get about a page of writing with it closed, but you'll write it dry unless you unscrew the lid enough for that plunger to let ink flow down into the nib. So that's something to remember if you buy a vacuum filler. These will run you around 80 bucks, maybe a little bit less depending on if you get the iris model or a different model. And then my current most expensive pin is this Pilot Custom 743. Now there's another Pilot pen called a Pilot Custom 823. It seems to be a lot of people's grail pen, and a grail pen is kind of your ultimate. If I could afford it, I would buy that pen. The Custom 743 has the same shape and style of the 823 and the same nib, but instead of, the 823 is a, is a vacuum filler like I just showed you. This has a cartridge or um, converter fill system. So it comes with a Pilot Con 70 converter. By the way, if you're gonna get a Pilot converter and the Con 70 will fit in your pin, get the Con 70, not the Con 40. It is like a million times better. So the Con 40 is built, this is not a Con 40, but it's the same idea. So it's, it's the piston filling system, just like the other pins I showed you. And the Con 70 is a button filler. So you put the nib, just like this, put the nib down into your ink and you just push the button and you'll get a completely full fill. It's just way nicer and less fiddly. This pen has a Pilot size 15 nib. Um, and the 15 refers to the size of the metal part of the nib, not the point. Um, Pilot usually has a size five or a size 15. This is the size 15. It's equal to a size six um, in other brands. It's basically their big model. They do go up to a 20, but I don't have a 20. So anyway, my point about the 743 is it is exactly the same as the 823, but instead of using a vacuum filler, it's just a regular cartridge or converter. I like that because the vacuum filler with the need to open the valve, I find a little bit fiddly. Now the reason they have that, I'm going super out of order, I'm sorry. 
The reason that they have that is, is for people who fly on planes, basically. So if you're flying on a plane and you take a fountain pen, the ink is gonna go everywhere because of the pressure distribution in the cabin. So if you close this, it'll keep the ink contained and it won't go everywhere. So this is actually really nice if you do fly a lot, you can just close that cap and then open it when you need to use the pen. If, um, if you don't fly a lot, you don't really need that. So it's nice to have the option, but this pen is actually my current grail pen. It's uh, 14 karat gold. All the finishes are 14 karat gold. The nib is um, made of 14 karat gold. It's not 100%, it's whatever 14 karat is. Um, but it's a beautiful fine writing nib. This is a Pilot Fine nib, which is a Japanese fine. It writes very fine. So, show you. It's not quite as fine as these others, but I think that's due to the softness of the nib. If your nib is 24 karat gold, 14 karat gold, excuse me, um, it's gonna be a little bit more flexible and probably flow a little bit more. So it looks a little bit wider, but really not much at all. So that is <clears throat> the sort of range of pens that you can get. Um, there are a lot more out there. I am just touching the surface, but these are what I consider the best of each price range that you could go for. So next I wanna talk about syringes. This is the absolute number one tool you must have, in my opinion, if you are going to be a fountain pen aficionado. So syringes are good for a multitude of purposes. They are good for cleaning out your fountain pens. So I'm just looking for a pen that I don't have anything in. So if I had removed or used all the ink in this pen and I needed to clean it, what I would do is I would push the piston all the way to the end, pull out the nib and feed. Now I'd have a cup of water in the bathroom sink and I would fill my syringe with water and repeatedly inject it into the, so I don't know if you can see, but my the needle of the syringe is going through that hole and into the body of the pen. So you can do that and you can flush it with water until the body is clean. And you can do the same in this cavity, but it's a lot easier to clean that space. Once you've done that and the water runs clear from the body, you can then use the syringe to remove any excess water from that space as well to help your pen dry out faster. Once you've cleaned your pen, put your nib and feed back in. Again, the nibs and feeds on Twisby's are really nice because they seat together. There's a space there in the feed where the nib goes. All right, like that. And you just kind of shove it in. And again, these are friction fit and this one is fitting much tighter than um, the Twisby Go, which is good. That's the way it's supposed to be. The other thing that you can use syringes for that's really nice is instead of buying converters for your pens, and you, you can buy converters if you want to, they're anywhere from 10 to $15, give or take, sometimes less. You can actually take your empty cartridges that came with ink, use your syringe, suck up your ink from the bottle, put it in the converter, and then stick your converter back on your pen. Bam, you got a new fill, filled cartridge. So. I actually did that for several months at minimum before I um, had converters for all my pens. In fact, I think I still have a few pens that have filled cartridges in them. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to recycle your cartridges. These will last, I mean, they're hard plastic. They'll, they'll last a really long time until that hole gets to the point where it doesn't hold on to the feed on the pen anymore. And then you kind of have to get rid of it. But I haven't had that problem yet. Now, cartridges are specific to brand. So this happens to be a platinum cartridge. I would only use it in a platinum pen. Um, but once you get a pen, they usually come with free cartridges. You can, um, you can use your syringe actually to clean out your cartridge. So you can fill your syringe with water, squirt it in the cartridge several times until the water runs clear, let it dry out, and then fill it with your ink. Um, the other thing that syringes are really good for 
is if you buy ink samples, and first of all, let me just tell you, ink samples are magic. You can spend like $3 and get a little, like one time, one fill sample of an ink, just to try to see if you like it. And it's like three or $4, depending on what you buy. And you can try out the ink um, and see if you like it so that you're not spending $22 on a giant bottle of ink that will last you three years. You've got a one single fill, so you could try it out and see if you like it. And generally speaking, the samples that I've gotten will fill these cartridges probably two or three times, or they'll fill a Twisby body once with a little bit left over. So these are usually two milliliter samples from Goulet pens, and this holds like 1.9 milliliters. Um, so ink, uh, ex syringes are really good for getting your ink from your sample bottle into your pen because often you can't get the pen deep enough into the ink in the sample bottle to fill it in the normal way, which is with the converter or with the vacuum filler. So I actually almost always fill my pens with a syringe instead of the usual, like stick your nib in the ink and go through all the, I just, I don't, I just put it, put it into the, into the, put it into the body or I put it into the cartridge or I put it into the converter using a syringe. I love it. It takes a little longer for the ink to get down into the nib of the pen, but that's the other really nice thing. If you have a pen like this that has a piston, you can do what we call priming the feed. So if I've used a syringe to put the ink into the body of this pen, there's no ink up here flowing to the nib yet. Even if I turn it upside down, it'll take a couple of hours to get it going. What you can do is very carefully hold your pen upside down like this, twist the piston just a little bit until you see the ink kind of bubbling up around the edges of your pen nib. Once you see that, pull the piston back again and then let the pen sit pointed down for like five or 10 minutes and you will find that your pen will start working a lot faster. Um, so that's my little tip trick for you. Now I also wanna talk about inks because a lot of people say that they don't like fountain pens, um, but actually, or they don't like the pen that they tried or something like that, but often it's not about, it's not really about not liking the pen, it's about not liking the ink pen paper combination. So that is the holy triad of fountain pens, nib or pen, ink and paper. So all three of those can contribute to a horrible or a pleasurable writing experience. So we've talked about the pens and the nibs, which you kind of have to figure out what you like. We haven't talked about ink yet. So this is platinum carbon ink. This is waterproof ink. Um, this, in my opinion, is the best waterproof ink you can get, but I understand it's not readily available in some countries. So whatever works for you is totally fine. Um, if you find a waterproof ink that's good for you, please use it, I, I don't care. The, what's important to realize is every different brand of ink has different properties. So for example, this Noodler's Blue Black, the black part is waterproof, but the blue isn't. That's part one. Part two is Noodler's Black ink never dries on Tomoe River paper. If you haven't heard of Tomoe River paper, it's a paper made in Japan, there's some production issues at the moment. It's a, it's a paper made in Japan and people love it for fountain pens because it shows off the shading and sheening properties of inks very, very well. I won't say the best. In my opinion, it's the best, but there are a lot of different brands out there. Um, so Tomoe River Paper, I don't use this Noodler's ink with Tomoe River Paper because it never, ever dries. I mean, never. So I won't use any Noodler's black inks on Tomoe River. I will use other colors of Noodlers, just not the black or combinations that have black in them. Now, another type of ink is shimmer inks. So this is one of the most popular shimmer inks. It's called Emerald de Chivar, Chivour. I don't speak French. It's by J. Herbon, it's the company. And it is a teal colored ink with a red sheen and a green shimmer or gold shimmer maybe. Um, this is absolutely the most popular shimmer ink, I'm pretty sure, out of all of them. It's beautiful, but you have to be really careful with shimmer inks because if you don't 
move the pin around and use it a lot, that shimmer can collect just like it collects in the bottle. The shimmer will collect in your pen and it will either stop writing if it collects in the nib and clogs the feed or it might just not have any shimmer in the part that you wrote or lots of things can happen with shimmer inks. They work better in a wider nib, so like a medium or a broad. I have used these inks in fine and extra fine nibs and they work, but you have to be very conscientious that you have a shimmer ink in your pen. So you need to make sure that you use it every day, every other day. You need to pick it up, move it around every couple of minutes, uh, like once a day, pick it up and roll it around so that those shimmers don't kind of get stuck together. So you can see like I'm shaking this and it's taking a little bit of effort to get those shimmers off the bottom. That's what's gonna happen in your pen if you don't pick it up and move it around regularly to keep those shimmers coated in ink. So just keep that in mind. It's not to say that you can't use shimmer inks in your pens, but you wanna just, they're a little bit high maintenance, especially if you're using a finer nib. So keep that in mind. Another popular brand that's waterproof is this company. Um, it's made by Rohrer and Klingner, which is a German company. And they make this ink called Sketch Ink. Now what I have discovered about Sketch Ink is that it has, it, maybe it's iron gall, I'm not sure, but it has a pigment or something in it that settles and it settles rock hard. So I was finding that my pen inks were changing. If my pen pen sat for two or three days, my pen ink color would change because that sediment had settled or it was blocking the nib and I would have to dip it in water. So I don't use these anymore, unfortunately. I love them. I think the colors are beautiful and I love that they have colored permanent inks but I can't get behind that sediment in my fountain pen. So in a cheap pen, maybe, sure, but when I have other options available, I just, I don't, I don't go for it. So I have like four bottles of this that I'm not using. Um, there are other brands that make, if you look for pigment ink, you're probably more likely to find something that's waterproof. This pen is actually filled with Sailor's Blue Waterproof Pigment Ink called Seiboku, that's the color name, which I think means just blue. I use this for all of my watercolor doodles where I may or may not add markers or color. Um, it's a beautiful blue. I love this pen, I love the ink in it. And um, so I encourage you to play around with waterproof inks. Just kind of know what you're getting into. Look for that sediment in the bottle. Um, check for reviews online for clogging and things like that. And start with an inexpensive pen if you're gonna mess with waterproof inks. Uh, another ink I wanted to talk about, or another ink feature quality that I wanted to talk about is wetness and dryness. So ink isn't just made of pigment and water. Ink is made of dye and water and perhaps a flow medium or a dispersant or other chemicals that make it behave in certain ways. So the Pilot Orochizuku line of inks is fantastic because it will work in basically any pen you put it in. It's a little bit on the wet side, but that means that if you have a dry pen or an extra fine nib, this ink will always work for you. So I have several colors in this line. I've never run into any trouble. The colors are beautiful. Several of the machine. Um, it's just a like a rock hard go to cost effective line, especially if you go through ink. So I don't necessarily go through ink, but they cost about $22 for a bottle and these are 50 milliliter bottles. And so price per milliliter, that's a really good price. Um, so this would be considered a wetter ink, perhaps not Kanpeki, but several of their Roshizuku inks are wetter. This is Urban's Lee de Tay, which is, it translates to tea, I think. Um, so it's a brown ink and it's, a beautiful ink, I find it it writes on the dry side. So what that means is if I have a super extra fine nib, this ink has a harder time laying down on the paper than if I use like a fine or a medium nib where it's gonna give more flow anyway because the nib is bigger. So basically, if I say that I have a dry ink, that means whatever chemicals are in it make it flow less easy compared to a wetter ink. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to find information about wet versus dry when it comes to inks. So sometimes you just kind of have to try it. The nice thing is 
companies like this, they sell smaller bottles. So this is actually, this is not a sample. This is the company sells bottles this size. So several companies do that. You can try to find um, smaller sizes. But if you can't find the smaller size, don't forget, you can buy samples from several fountain pen companies, Goulet Pens. Um, I personally like Goulet Pens and Yoseka Stationery. I'll put links to those in the description. Yoseka sells their um, samples in three or five milliliter options. So this is a five milliliter sample. So this will actually fill one of my Twisby pens twice and then some. So it's a very generous sample that they sell. They sell them in two different options. So one would fill up this vial, one would fill it to about here, and the other option would fill it to about here. And I usually buy the full vials worth of ink. So lots of different options for ink samples and smaller sizes. So you can try out and see what's um, a dry ink, what's a wet ink. The other thing is if you have inks that sheen, Make sure that you use your pen pretty regularly because sheening inks can tend to dry out your pens. Uh, well, they can tend to dry out if you don't use them and then your pen, you'll need to just basically dip it in water to get it, get it going again. Um, and so a sheening ink is an ink where the, the you'll see um, like rings form around the edge, like a halo forms around the edge of the ink. I'll try to put a picture in here of uh, sheening ink so you can see what I mean. Um, but basically, if you put enough ink on the page, it forms a sheen or a, a reflection on it. If you have a heavily sheening ink, and in fact, this one is a heavily sheening ink. This one looks um, almost black. It's a blue ink, but it's got so much dye in it. The dye proportion is so high that it sheens. Anyway, if you have a sheening ink, um, it can tend to dry out in your pens because it just doesn't have enough, as much liquid in it um, compared to dye. Like the dye ratio is higher. So that's how they get it to be a sheening ink. They put more dye into the mix and it makes it shine like that. Um, so if you love sheening inks, just make sure that you have a pen that can take a drier ink because they're almost always dry. Not always, but almost always dry. Um, and probably try it in a less expensive pen first uh, just to make sure it doesn't ruin your pen. And if it dries out in your pen, make sure you soak it in water for quite some time, at least the nib and feed to make sure that you get all that ink out because if you refill it again and it's not totally clean, your next ink, uh, your next ink fill will be discolored by the first one. Okay, that is my brain dump on fountain pens. I hope that's been helpful. If you have questions about fountain pens or if you want suggestions or advice or anything like that, pop a comment down in the description box. No, not in the description box. <laughs> pop a comment right down there in the comment section and I will do my best to answer your questions or point you in a direction where you can find the answer. I'm also gonna put some links to some uh, really nice, helpful um, websites where you can like do ink comparisons and I'll put links to my favorite fountain pen sellers, uh, at least in the States, maybe internationally. And so you can check it out. I hope this has helped and I will see you all very soon. Bye.